randomized controlled trials in social science and more than in agriculture um, is very much technically the same idea as what's done in medicine. Okay? The idea is that if you want to see, to measure for its simple form, the impact of one intervention, like informing the farmers about something or giving subsidies to farmers to purchase input, any one of these interventions. Uh, the point is that if you want to measure the impact that it has, then you would need to know what would the farmer have done if they didn't receive that intervention, right? So you want to know those farmers who actually take on the intervention, take on, listen to uh, your advice and adopt the new technology. What would they have done if you have not provided with the information and the technical support to do the that. Now, it's hard to know, to see the people both doing one thing and not doing it, right? So there is a statistical method which says, okay, we're going to try to have a control group, which is a group which in everything else is the same as the farmers who have adopted, who have received intervention, but did not receive the intervention. So it's a statistical method. So we need to have a lot of observations, just like in the medical trial. But the point is that we can't, we can't really look at farmers who have adopted and farmers who have not adopted. They are never going to be the same because the adopters are the most dynamic people. Are. So that's why we use randomized control trial, where we are going to offer. So we start with a large population and randomly to half of them, we're going to offer them teach them the technology, see whether they uptake it and what they do with it, and to the other half, we are not going to offer them, not teach them. And it's by the statistical comparison between those two groups, on average, how different they are, that we can measure the impact of offering the technology. We have to be careful that in agriculture, seldom do we see the impact of uptaking the technology, because you can offer it to people, but they may not take it. So we're going to thumble, promote the technology and let's say 30% of the farmers adopt it and 70% don't adopt and we need to compare that whole group of 30 and 70 to the other half which were not even offered or promoted the technology. So that's the essence of randomized control trial. There's quite a few of them. So there is a lot of experiment and we did some ourselves in trying to see to measure the, the benefits of a new of new seed variety. In particular we are very concerned about the uh, flood tolerant, the uh, stress tolerant variety uh, the, and in Africa there was a, also some tr similar trial to look at the impact of Nerica. So, so, so it's very uh, it's very hard to see the impact. If you want to see whether that variety is good, I mean, if you ask the agronomist, they tell it's fantastic. I mean, it's always, a, uh, this is the next, this is the, the last discovery and that's going to do miracles. Now, it's only when you actually implement that in the field of the farmers and in a randomized control trial that you can actually measure how fantastic or not so fantastic it is, right? It's also, and again, because if you only look at those who adopted those flood tolerant variety and those who did not adopt, it's obviously the more advanced farmers, the more knowledgeable farmers that adopt it first. So you can't compare. When you do it in a randomized control trial, you see that. When it was introduced, this flood tolerant rice, not only did it protect the farmers for the flood uh, years when there was flood, but we found, and that's what all social scientists can do, we also could see that their response to having a flood tolerant rice make that they invested more in fertilizer in labor. And in a sense, the benefit of their own response benefit is as large, is the same order of magnitude as the benefit of the agronomic aspect, which is the flood tolerance. So only social scientists and randomized control trial can give you that. The same sort of measurement as for randomized controlled trials are the same sort of measurement that we have with for household and farm surveys. So in many ways we benefit from all the effort which is being made uh, here uh, in terms of the improvement in the from the, the LSMS ISA program. The one 
thing that I think we have used recently, which I think ex is really new and quite useful, is uh, a big issue in agriculture is the labor calendar. Uh, there's the p well, farmers are overworked during the high season and they have nothing to do the rest of the season. And we don't really understand how much they can combine farm and non-farm work, whether it's specialized in the household or whether it's actually changed from time to time, and the wages and the corresponding wage in ag and non-ag. So for that, we need to have very, f very high frequency data, which is something which never had before. We don't have in the LMS, LSMS for sure. And the use of SMS, very quick survey, uh, because now all the farmers have cell phone. The use of SMS and a very sort of rapid uh, survey like that has been extremely useful to get this sort of data that we have. I mean, like everybody else also, I think in terms of measurement, we started to use a lot of data from, uh, from, from uh, what's being observed from satellite images as well. So it's the combination more of the techniques which are developed in different areas which we use rather than having anything specific in randomized control trial.